Say with me, shame. shame. Say with me again, say shame. shame. Like it is there, okay? It's not some Chinese karate word. That's chi. And uh, chi is anyway in the Bible as well. Where do you think shame comes from? Okay, let's leave that alone before people get funny. Uh, what do you think, what was it when God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul? It says he breathed chi into it. If you don't know chi, go watch, uh, what is it? Um, karate Kid or, or something. Huh? Jackie Chan, you know. Uh, no, but there was another one, man, the dragon or something like that. Huh? The dragon, Bruce Lee. Yes, the return of the dragon, or what was it? Okay. <laughs> so chi is found in the Bible. Please don't go practice it like, like Bruce Lee. We'll show you another way if you stick for long. But if you know now, just me mentioning, just me now mentioning this, uh, just now me mentioning this, there might be an... You can't kill a dead man. I've died long ago. Cheered, it grew. This is, please, this is not our church. Our church is 1,300 attendants. And that's just in, in here. Like, like it's not, it's not an online or anything like that, or including Stefan and them or the USA. And that's just, you know, so, and God has done that in three or four weeks. So I love Centurion. The conferences we've had yet, if, you've, if you're New Year, you maybe you haven't seen it, if you're not New Year, I mean, it would be packed, the chairs would be packed to here. Right to the back, you can't even walk in and it would be power and glory. So what am I saying is that I have died a long time ago. For you to give your car away and you have no car for a year because God said so. And everybody says to you, you're foolish, you're stupid. You know, but I just know, you just know you heard a voice. And then you give this away. And my wife and I, like I said, we live a lifestyle of giving. And please, this is not an offering message. The whole message is an offering message because I'm going to take up an offering right at the end. Just for you to be, so that you, you, so that, you know, if your demons want to get upset now, it can get upset. Okay. So, 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 <laughs> the secret to money. Okay. So, uh, so I said to, I was speaking, I think, to Apostle Neville. And uh, I said, you know, you can't kill a dead man. I said, yes, I've been accepted now in various top groups, for example, the opening up of the church. And uh, 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 we represent a certain group. So there was seven, there's seven or eight people there that is working with, 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 with uh, Apostle Adbosov. And, uh, and God chose me for them. But that doesn't matter anything for me. If tomorrow I get a phone call because somebody badmouthed by him by him and cut me off, it wouldn't even move me. I, I don't know how to explain it. You see, I have, I know a lot of pastors. They are so addicted to man's approval. They bend backwards, forthwards, sideways, however, just so that people can love them. I said to one the other day, I said, you are, you, are, you are fearing man too much, a preacher. I said to another preacher, I said, you, I said, I said, I said, I said, where's your, you know, I said, be careful. I said, uh, you know, be careful, a very big preacher, trust me, very big one. I said, be careful. Before you know it, your identity will be gone. When I say big, I mean big, not, I mean, you know, uh, let's say the biggest in South Africa. I said, bef before you know it, your identity will be gone. How, how can I say it? Why can I say it? I've lost my reputation. I need nothing from them. That means the word of the Lord can be pure to them. Are you guys with me? So I plant centurion we love his centurion it's great now we need to go build kdp so we built kdp not raising one cent not one cent we build a 10 million rand building not raising one cent not having any money building it brand new there uh just the audio av is uh three million a 10 million rand building then we then we're doing certain things which we already purchased and everything that you'll see how big it's going to get now 
okay. And uh, I didn't want to go there. I know exactly every death threat that I get comes from there. Long before I planted a church. I know who they are. I know where it comes from. I know the triangular powers that is there. I know the, uh, uh, I know the, um, uh, 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 uh. yeah, we know a lot. But we were still busy building the KDP building and I'm preaching to you, Shane. Eh? And uh, we're building the building. I'm standing on the second floor by the kids' church. Busy building, had no roof on. I'm standing there with, with, with a man that was building the building for us. And it was like a second power fell on me and it clothed me. And I looked at him and he had tears in his eyes and he began to cry and I thought, and I looked again and I saw the man like this small down there. And God said to me, I've just given you the mantle for Kruger's door. Now, that is why I don't care about death threats. They cannot touch me. As many as we get. They'll kill every pastor that wants to succeed 500 people there. Physically. Are you guys with me? Yes. People just don't know. Uh, so then, and we've already succeeded with our conferences there. So, so you need a grace. I said to the church there, I said, uh, you know, let me not explain to you the offerings. The amount that comes in there. It's like 10% of what it should be. And uh, the rest who pays the rest. I have to take that from our personal ministry income, our personal income on the side. Most of it to pay for that. Because I don't mind. I don't mind. And uh, one businessman said to me, they, he has, they have a church and so on. And, as a church and the rent is a certain amount but it needs to like increase by 20 grand to get a bigger building or something said to me no they they can't do it i said you are a millionaire i said put your money in there and do the thing no this is too much risk i said you're not called what the hell are you doing by a church you saw me living on the streets you see me where i am now 20k I pay 300k a month for Kruger's door so I said to Kruger's door I I can I can tell them exactly what I want there's no there's no jumping to the dancing to the to the flute or paying the piper or uh, you know uh, being a puppet master under strings by any church members or Jezebel or business people there. No, no, nothing. I say what I want to say, led by the Holy Ghost, obviously. That means it can feed the people properly. I said, I said, and I said, do you really think I want to be here? I said, I don't want to be here. I said, I only want to be here because I love you. That is it. Kruger's Dorp is open. We love it there. It's open. But do you think I won't even live there? I was offered a lot of things there. I won't even live there. I will live outside of there. <laughs> because I know what's going on there. I know how they seek after me. Every death threat we got, most, let's say 90%, Kruger's door. I was preaching a meeting and they were, it was packed in KDP. And I walked and I lay hands, power, you know, there was a lot of power. And I get to the one man, like, come stand here. Now, obviously, I just need to explain to you that Roche wears a billionaire shirt, which is about uh, maybe like uh, this one, the logo will probably be about 18,000, I think, you know. So, um, I'm joking. Okay, so, now I'm not joking. I'm, in reality, I'm just joking on like, uh, that I'm not meaning to, 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 to provoke him. We, we get these things on good prices, okay? 
And I went like this. Now I'm walking, as I do with you, as I minister, and many of you have seen it, and I, all of you receive it. Now you get to a church like that, the heavens is dead. Because number one, the pastor is controlled by somebody there. The poor pastor must lock open the church, close the church. Um, I mean, you know, I don't blame him for being a wreck. I don't know how his marriage is making it. So I'm laying hands. There's power. One guy runs to the front. Somebody reposted an image or something in the, in the week uh, about it. And I remember praying for me. He ran to the front while I'm preaching, screaming, heroin addict. And he ran to the front. Power hit him. And I remember holding my hand like this. And the guy was hopping like this on the floor as he began to manifest. And he soiled his whole pants in front of the church. Pastor Martin and Pastor Christian took him to the back and Stefan, they did deliverance on him, he came out free, testified, sober, free. And it was his birthday. So then we carry on. Then there was a Satan sitting right at the back. God, this black hair, like just angry at me the whole time. He was like tall. So I'm preaching Sunday, he's still there. Monday, he's still there. Tuesday, he's still there. Wednesday, the devil got upset in him and he came for me. Okay. And he came for me. I mean like possessed. And the guy is a big guy. And I'm standing, the guy was with me. I don't know if Gerard, were you there or not? Were you there? And he tried to punch me. And he tried to punch me and it like, he couldn't. He's like, and the demons are manifesting. You know, and I'm so tired of this. So I said, Martin, Chris, go deliver the guy. They took him to the back. They did deliver. Said, that one was heavy. You know, the, the man came out free, following our ministry to this day. Then after that, I'm walking in KDP and I'm walking like this and I slapped and I'm looking at this guy and he's just, he doesn't want to look me in the eyes. So I come and he's looking there. And I go and I slap like this. And as I slap, oh no, sorry, 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 sorry. I prophesied over the wife. I looked at the man and I'm praying for him, but nothing is really happening. He's looking the other way and I walked on and God said to me, his eyes have seen murder. So I go back and I hit him hard that his button opened here. And there was a microphone recording me. And he would take that to the occult, obviously. And they would study our stuff. They'd come in and write whole journals about how we dress and this and that. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And some of them watch us when we come here and all this stuff waiting outside for us and stuff like that. Whatever they're planning or whatever they're doing. If I be a man of God, thanks. If I be a man of God. If somebody can come and kill me in the flesh, then I should have never even been in the ministry or anything like that. I'm speaking now in that sense. Because there's been many times they've come here, outside. And uh, whether they'll take photos or wait for us or wanting to get to us, they can't. But they are planning. But, say with me, but, shine. Say it again, say shine. What is shame? Shame is simply in the English word favor. Say with me favor. That there is a favor that is available for you. Favor and grace is used interchangeably in the Old Testament. When Noah found grace with the Lord, the Bible also says Noah found favor with the Lord. It's used interchangeably. But favor is something unique. When favor is upon somebody, it has number one, the power of attraction. I'm speaking to a very successful person, very wealthy person. They said, I can't do ministry like you. You have the power of attraction. I said, it's not a power of attraction, it's favor. But there's a way to access that favor. Are you guys with me? I know we have a lot of people online also right now. This, uh, if I hope the numbers are updated. There's a way to access that favor. Once you have it, you become a magnet to things that are good in life. But trust me, you also become a magnet.
two attacks that wants to take you out. But as long as favor and grace is on your life, it won't be able to touch you. For though a weapon is formed against you, it shall never prosper. Every word that is raised up against you in judgment, you shall condemn, says the word. It doesn't say God shall condemn. The Bible says you will condemn it. Are you guys with me? This week, this is this week I'm going to teach on in our, in our live streams in the evenings. I'm going to speak on dangerous prayers. When you can get on your knees and say, strike that one with death. But you have to be, you have to be like, know exactly what you're doing. Because if you do it wrong, it can come back at you. Are you guys with me? I was praying. I said, Lord, I have forgiven my enemies. I have loved them. I have forgiven them. I have proved it to you. I said, uh, I've done everything that to make right. Until it came to a point, I said, now I pray for madness to strike them. Madness. And lo and behold, it is starting. Nothing of me. Say with your favor. If you look at me, Leon has died a long time ago. You cannot be in ministry and have a place for offense. I have died. If you see a minister, a man of God that moves in power and the supernatural, trust me, they have died to themselves. If you see maybe they have mansions and cars, trust me, they don't have that because of who they want it. They don't even think it's just a manner, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a means to an end. Whether it is to accommodate people or do something. When you preach, they accuse one man of God for, you know, having all this stuff. The man preached morning, afternoon, evening, every day for 15, 20 years. Where do you enjoy a Bentley? And if you know what it takes to preach that amount, hmm. you know, then obviously we got attacked with a, with a thing this morning, oh, not this morning, we got attacked with a thing this week, a big attack. And obviously we always go through lawsuits and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, this was one and so with your favor. So the team is freaking out and upset and scared. Say, so listen, this is a serious thing. You know, you can lose everything. This is very, very bad. I looked at the letter. I just like, ah, oh, whatever. You know, no, this is like from the biggest place and the biggest person. And I said, listen, I don't, I said, there's a place where it's the man's Leon speaking. But then there's a place where the prophet speaks. And I knew by the gift of the prophet of my life. <laughs> I don't want to say the word, but I think some of you might know, you know, when you're something in the wind, in Afrikaans, you know, <laughs> with all due respect. And, uh, and I actually said it to some, and it was not 10 minutes. I said, I'm going to make two calls. We were in a session. I said, I'm going to make two calls. It was not 10 minutes. Some of the biggest generals alive today called me. Uh, said the exact same words almost, and then also say, uh, also said, don't worry. He said, uh, they won't touch you. If they do, it'll be their end. And again, if I tell you the name, I'm not going to do that. But I just, just to kind of like prove to the team to say that, you know, you just know when somebody has stepped into it. <laughs> and, and they have stepped into it. I feel so sorry. You know, we have given them grace. And, uh, uh, you know, they have time to, you know. But if they go ahead, it will no longer be me that they are touching. And don't think who it is. You know, it, it's not who you think it is, okay? It's no longer me who they're touching. It's God who they're touching. I would sit and I would, I'm sitting and the Holy Ghost is so strong on me. You know, he 
He's saying to me, uh, this is only for one. This happened. He says, I did it to do one, two, three, just to connect you with one, two, three. That's it. One of the, one of the greatest generals alive today called me then. He said, whatever happens, I'll be with you till the end. Because we refuse to be bullied. It's like you get from one, you know, we go from, I don't think I've lived a life without attacks. I don't think I've lived a life without attacks. And people want to come and cry. Why is he driving a Mercedes? It's not my Mercedes. It was mine, but we kind of like uh, gave it away. Then, um, or, or why this, or why, why somebody complained, why do we have a TV? Shut up, does it have anything to do with you? You have not given one cent, so you have no say anyway. Them now, not, not, not you. But, oh, I was wearing Versace. Let's get beyond these things. Please, Versace is cheap. Price is subjective. Are you guys with me? Okay, so, we only wear certain clothing, only wear it because of TV. That's all. That's all. Because they, it looks different on, it, it's, it's just, don't worry, it's just like that, okay? So uh, we are on TV, we're now on, on terrestrial and satellite TV, and we're signing more things. Because this message has to get out. Now, because we have thousands delivered. You know, we took over 1,300 people in deliverance, through proper deliverance. I'm not speaking of crowds that I did in Namibia. And crowds, I did it just here. 1,300 people through proper deliverance. So this message has to come out. But I want you to catch this revelation. We sent out a survey. And, I, and, and, and uh, did you guys do it in the announcement again tonight? Tonight? Please fill in that survey for us, guys. If you're online, please fill in that survey. Drop the link in the comment. The guys in the back, drop the link in the comment again. Please fill that survey in for us. You know that 90% of people said they would prefer long services. I'm serious. Now, if you were the one, now, if you were the one that said, no, I only want an hour. Well, you know, I'm sorry. We will have shorter services, not an hour. That I can bet you. But we will have shorter services. We'll go to two hours. We're supposed to go to two hours. Just Cape Town was just what was uh, uh, leading us. And, uh, and, uh, and we do a survey to just see exactly if we are on track and that we don't do something, and you would see exactly who your crowd is, what people want. It's amazing, you know? And uh, as I was reading it, and I think some people said the offering message was a bit too long this morning. Listen, it's, it's less, the whole message was an offering message. No, it wasn't. I preached all normal message, and at the end, I just took up a quick offering. But I understand that sometimes the only reason the offering messages is long if I'm not here is because I'm late. So I phone them and say, delay, delay. That's all. I promise you. So, 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 favor, shame, shame. Say with me, favor. When the favor of God is on you, it is, how can I say it? It is the cloud. You see, favor is not a miracle. It is, say with me, a reaction. Favor is not a miracle. It is a reaction. It is determined by how you react and respond. Whether the hand, grace, and favor of God comes upon you. What is it when favor is upon you? You stand out of the crowd. You get a job where everybody else is qualified. It's like Esther. You know when Esther was chosen by the king? She stood as a beauty pageant. She stood there and there was people on her left and people on her right. Ages 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds. Are you guys with me? Prepared for the king. So you can imagine now the bodies and everything. I'm just being common sense. Prepared for the king. Esther 
Most theologians will tell us you were 76 years old. Grandmother Esther sitting, st standing in the middle. But there's a beauty pageant. And somehow all of those others were blinded for the king. And the only one that he could see was Esther. Because of the favor of God that hovered over her. Favor, say with me, favor. When favor comes on you, it will locate you if you go to a job, of, even if you don't have the qualifications, you haven't studied and you don't have the experience. It's like they'll be blinded to every other CV that comes in, but yours will stand out. It comes through the anointing and multiplies through the prophetic anointing. My life is a result of favor. Are you guys with me? Listen, I just said, my, my life is a result of favor. Everything you see is favor. We work our butts off. Yes, we work. But we don't sweat and toil to have people in the building. When you see what God does in the ministry, it's Him doing it. Are you guys with me? Because unless the Lord builds the house, the house is built in vain. Hmm. Are you guys with me? So say with me, shame. You know... <laughs> I want to give you, and just quick, we'll be quick, give me five minutes. I want to give you like seven laws when it comes to how to affect the favor of God on your lives. Seven laws on how to affect the favor of God. And uh, rarely I teach, when I say I teach, usually 99% of the time, I just teach what's in my spirit. But I want to, I, I don't want, I want to get this right through to you, ends. I, I just have my iPad with me because I want to give you seven laws that affect your favor that is very important that where you're in your workplace whether you run your own business there's favor that is on you favor is a response and a reaction to something it is not a miracle or selected for a few you guys with me? You need favor in ministry. What is the favor of God when they do a national TV show to, to destroy you and it embarrasses themselves? I, I don't know if it was just me that was just seeing it, but I was looking at that show. I thought, dear God, did somebody put your, uh, your so-called victims through a... Uh, uh, let's not let's not let's not defame okay uh did somebody uh put your so-called victims just 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 did somebody screen them because it's not working so well on tv one person's eyes went all over as the programs were kicking in anyway let me not go there okay the uh then every clip they played on us turned out to be anointed. So basically we got an hour of free airtime for marketing. I could have sued them, I could have won. I could have sued them for defamation. Because they lied, they said we're in money laundry, they said we're in fraud, and they said you're coming here with posters screaming my name and prophet and this and that by the way you who have said it you know it is a lie you know it is an outright lie you also who said it that I pay people and that they profess that I pro that uh, I'm just making a person trust me very angry right now I pay people that they prophesy you know it is wrong and if you're a Christian you better repent it will not, things are not going to change unless that is, you, you can't sit outright on TV as a pastor and lie. If there's anybody in this church or online who I have ever paid to prophesy over, they can, I will give everything away that I have. Number two. If I have ever orchestrated a prophecy where I say the one that is putting you to your seats, that they, 
they come to you, they ask you some questions, and then my staff comes and tells you the information they got. If you can find that out amongst any of my staff, I'll close the church now. And when they realize, okay, we're not doing these ways, now it's a familiar spirit that's giving me prophecy. Now it's familiar spirit. Who has made you uh, 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 judge, jury, and executioner? As far as I know, there's a local church, a body of Christ, a presbytery that can call me in and discuss doctrine. Otherwise, you have no authority what happens here in encounter. Nothing whatsoever. You need deliverance. So I'm just using that as a sh an example. It's great testimony. They even said if I carry on, they're going to sue me. What are they going to sue me about? I didn't even ask. I, would, I, I didn't sign nothing with the show. Nothing. So they said, oh, I, this is part of my testimony. You did it without our permission without signing, without approval, and you said you're going to do it for harm, and I have it on email. You said if I, if I don't submit and come, we will make you look bad, and we will destroy you. I got it on email. I don't respond to bullies. I do not react well to bullies. And I'm so glad the Holy Ghost said to me, no, not to go. Other men of God, they were so happy. Yes, let's go on to the show. I had to phone them. I said, do you know what you're getting yourself into? I said, if the media builds your ministry, the media will break your ministry. But if the media hasn't built your ministry, they cannot touch your ministry. No media has built encounter. I have not gone to newspapers to try to say the miracles that we are doing. Are you guys with me? So favor is when it seems like everything is going bad, yet God turns it out for His good. And to be for your promotion, where everybody thinks you're dead, done and dusted. It turns out for your promotion, where the people that you served now begins to serve you and they can't figure it out in their minds. This is my life story. The people that I had to bow before, bowed before me when God chooses a man no one can fight that are you guys with me and as long as somebody as God is using somebody I'll always tell you never speak against that person number one say with you the law of integrity if you want to see what will affect favor on your life, integrity. Say with me, integrity. And actually thinking of something. What is integrity? Favor, another word for favor, or another explanation is what we call the Midas touch. Everything you touch turns to gold. When Joseph, Joseph had the Midas touch, the Bible says the Lord was with him when he was in prison. The Lord was with him when he was caught up in slavery. Are you guys with me? The Lord was with him. And what did he do in prison? He made other people's dreams come to pass. When he made other people's dreams come to pass, his dream that he had eventually came to pass. But the dream he had when he was young had to die, had to be locked up in prison before it could be made manifest. What causes you to be in prison in what they call a, a, a treason, a crime of treason? The prison that Joseph was in was not a normal prison. It was a prison for those who committed treason. Your worst kind of uh, criminals that'll die the worst kind of death. You do not come out of there. Yet the two he prophesied over came out. Are you guys with me? When he came out, what takes you from a place being at a treason to commit crime against a king, but yet be second in command 
the moment you come out of there. Say favor. That is favor. When in, in your workplace, it's like nothing, everybody's looking down on you, nothing is happening. And the next day you just walk in and all of a sudden they say, no, no, look, we've had a meeting as the board and we want to give you 40% partnership shares. It's like you cannot even figure out what has happened. This is the God we serve. We serve a God that is into nepotism. He's into favorites. He favors some, not all. King David said these words. He says, he, he said, he said, I have chariots, I have lands, I have properties, houses, cars. He said, I'm so wealthy. He said, and God chose me to be king simply because he liked me. Are you guys with me? Rafa, he liked me. That's it. Meaning, God just found a liking in me and he made me king. He didn't find the liking in somebody else, but in King David. Are you guys with me? I've been around people, many people, and I can just be next to them. I can feel God just likes this person. This person is so anointed. Anything they will do, they will have success. Anything. Get to the place of favor. Shine anointing. What does the word shine mean? Are you guys with me? What does the word shayan mean? Or where does it come from, derive from, and where is it going? First of all, say with me money. money. Say it again, say money. money. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, you're not going to like what I'm going to tell you right now. Are you guys with me? So, the word shine, the Hebrew, especially rabbis, that understands the, the root of the language and where English words are derived from will tell you, number one, there's no word for coincidence in Hebrew. Nothing. Number two, there's no word for vacation in Hebrew. Are you guys with me? <clears throat> there's no word for by chance in Hebrew. What is the other one? Uh... There's no word as luck, good luck in Hebrew. No word like that. But when it comes to Shayan, I was studying a book of a rabbi that's a businessman and explaining how God is a businessman and he takes favor. And the root of the word Shayan, oh sorry, not Shayan, the root, the actual word Shayan, which is the favor of God, means is where we get our English word coin. Are you guys with me? Which means it literally means money. Stop thinking that favor means something good is going to. It literally means money. Money is so in God's purpose and God's will that the art of trade, of business, where I trade value, I give you money and you return it to me in value with your time, your expertise, your skill. That is the structure that God has incorporated right from the beginning for man to have prosperity. That value can be exchanged. Are you guys with me? Before corruption, all these things came away. Value can be exchanged and fair business can be built up. A minister had, needs to have faith. I have to have faith to build this church. A businessman or a businesswoman has to have faith in their business. They acquire stock. They get stock in to make sure and they think by their faith in God that they're going to sell the stock that they've just bought. It's faith. And then when they have <clears throat> favor, they become a magnet to coins. There was no paper money. In the times we're speaking, they had coins. Are you guys with me? Silver or gold coins. Many times, most of the time, silver. And obviously they had silver and gold, but they had coins. They worked with coins and they worked with barter. But the word favor is shine. You know, I would preach like this now and people here would be upset now. You're such a coward. You're angry in your heart. You won't show it to others. 
but you'd be upset just the fact that I'm mentioning that can you believe that people can get upset when you say God wants them to be blessed imagine what type of devil must be in them if you want to be poor you're welcome to leave God has nothing to do with poverty where there is poverty you can be rest assured God is not there I am not saying where there is prosperity God is there I'm saying where there is poverty God is definitely not there so what am I saying I'm not saying everybody that is prosperity is as God no 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 money can be gained by ill ways are you guys with me but where there's poverty God is very far away his very name means prosperity I'm not even going to get into the roots of the Hebrew word. His name is derived and it comes, but this part of His name is prosperity. That wherever God manifests, even in Scripture, there'll be blessings upon blessings in that area and location. When the Ark of the Covenant went to the house of, who was it? Who was it? Help me. Obed Edom's house. Obed Edom was a Philistine, eh? He was an enemy. Obed Edom. The ark was in his house. How that came, I don't know how that worked. But the ark was there. And everything in Obed Edom's house was blessed. Even the fruits and vegetables you would get. If an apple was this size, his apple would be this size. The glory. Do you know the revival that happened in Fiji? I, I, I hope you know the whole of Fiji got saved. Huh? The study revival, okay? Understand God's moving sometimes. When Fiji got saved, there was a revival that broke out there. That's why you'll see most of the, most of, most of the, I don't know, who's in Fiji? Is it Aborigines? In, in, in Fiji also, okay. So most fear God. Yes, I know there's tribalism and all those things. But that there was a revival that sweeped that country. And it is proven on video the size of vegetables that they would pull out of the ground because revival filters and the glory filt even goes into the very soil it will make your soil fertile perfect you will dig and oil will come out and you were like but what what you, you know uh, there was somebody one of but have you seen it's one of benny hen's partners they were poor living in Texas and they dug and or I think Benny Hinn prophesied over them or something and oil and they and they hit a oil now listen when you hit oil in the United States it's not the borehole in South Africa you become a multi-billionaire okay and they hit this Benny made a joke. He said, this, so they came, asked him to come and pray. He said, yeah, he, look, he's a bit business. He said, no, 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 look, look. We're going to give you $2 million. We just need you to come here. He says, I'm coming. He said, do you want me to, do you want me to throw the, the oil, the anointing oil on it? What do you want me to do? Okay, it's just a joke. Okay. Uh, but it's like, but where is that? That's ungodly. David says, what shall be given to the man who takes out Goliath? Meaning, I want to know what is the price. I'm going to take him out for free. I will deal with him, but I want to know what is in it for the man who takes out Goliath. Are you guys with me? I want you to understand what we are pioneering in South Africa and into the nations of this world as God spreads encounter. When it comes to people like Stefan, Kevin in the United States, we planted a church there, Kruger's Door, even Kruger's Door. I never thought or planned these things. I really just wanted a small church in Centurion. I thought by year three, you will have 140 people in a small place and I had my idea of what I'm going to do with them. So please understand, we are not ambitious in any way. Quite the opposite. People are like, these big pastors, 10,000 people churches, they phone me. Well, the one met me the other, Leon, please keep your head under the radar. I'm like, my head is under the radar. You don't want to see my, when I pop my head out of the radar. 
I am very under the radar. I'm waiting for a certain time, things in my life to be right. When it comes to finances, when it, because once I lift my head out, I need to make sure things are right for the attacks and the consequences that will come. So I say to the person sincerely, my head is under the radar. Somebody said, there's no way we could have gotten this church and the other church. Like Somebody has to be giving us millions. I hope so. I haven't seen any millions coming in. But I've seen the middle class supporting the church. I've seen the middle class. Just you sitting here. Think of this logically. You s- three, do you know how much is three million rand a month? When you can take up an offering a whole day in a church of 2,000 rand total. But I have to get three million rand in a month. So, you know, you either go all in or don't go in at all. Say with me favor. So favor comes with integrity. Imagine the integrity that Joseph had. That he, even when it comes to Potiphar's wife, what he did when he ran away, that he would be taken out of a place where there was a, a, a treason, crime of treason against the king. Yet he became the right hand man of Pharaoh second in charge it's called the favor of God I want you to catch this that favor will rest upon you that even if there's just 300 okay just for this camera's sake don't worry we have a thousand people here okay so just if there is 300 like Gideon where God said listen a thousand is too many people I cannot win a battle with a thousand. Why? I want the glory, says the Lord. So give me 300 men that has the ability to pick up water and keep their eyes on the enemy and keep sipping the water, but not stuck their face into it to quench their own thirst first and have no interest in the battle. Give me people that are mighty in battle. They are sensitive, they are watchful, they keep their eyes on the enemy. Those ones I'll put my spirit upon. Are you guys with me? David's mighty men around him became so powerful. The one man killed a thousand people with his sword, standing in one place until his sword got stuck to his his hand. Come on, are you guys with me? Another one just killed lions in a snowy pit because he felt like it. Another one threw uh, uh, a... through uh, 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 had sores in two hands or through stones with two hands until he killed hundreds of people these people had uh, were mighty in battle their faces were lion-like when people looked at them they looked like lions are you guys with me but they knew formation they knew protocol they knew they knew authority they knew rank they knew when to step out in rank when we go left we go left when we go right we go right when it comes to the church let me tell you when we open up the church why do I say I will do nothing when it comes to the opening up of the church unless Pastor Ad Bosov directs it why have I said it the whole year I will do nothing with the opening up the church I will not make the decision unless he does it because I know that God has anointed him and graced him to do it I am not somebody that steps out of rank I am not somebody that is stepping out of rank or that is stepping out of file or want to be seen in the limelight I couldn't care less there's one thing I want the church to be opened the glory of God to enter into the building the presence to enter casinos to close nightclubs to shut down do you know how packed the malls are they are packed to overflow but yet the church has to be empty and you Christian you think there's nothing happening let me tell you it's the beginning of persecution persecution is not when they kill you in the name of Jesus they don't kill you in the name of Jesus they kill you because if you invoke the name of Jesus you gather crowds and when you gather crowds in China you become non-compliant and that is when they begin to chop your head off 
So what is persecution? It is compliance. This, listen, listen, the glory of God is sanctioned, set apart for one place and one place only. Not the streets, the sanctuary. It is for the house of God. King David says, I long to see your power and your glory. I prophesy that the church must open. You will see, you will see, the government will see what the church is capable of. Trust me. The government will see what the church is capable of. I, I, you can't kill a dead man. I am dead. We are dead. Which means we don't care what happens to our natural bodies. Jesus said to Matthew, On this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not be railed against the church. Jesus said, Go tell that fox. I will cast out devils. I will do miracles. Today, tomorrow, until on the third day when I'm perfected. Ah, but listen, what the devil doesn't know is when he closed the church down, when he brought persecution, what was he doing? He was perfecting the church. Bringing you to maturity, to be at a place where the fire of the Holy Ghost will fall in this nation. I say it again. I have said it last year. I've said it at the beginning of this year and I'm saying it for a last time. If the government will not open the church, they will see an uprising like they've never seen before. It will be a godly uprising. In the eyes of man, it will be rebellion and non-compliance. In the eyes of God, it will be, be obedience. It will be a move of God. And it will go down in the books of history. That when they try to shut the church, that there was a remnant or where there were people that are saying, enough is enough. Say this with me. Say the devil is in trouble. Say it again. Say the devil is in trouble. Say no more. In Jesus' name. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Have you seen this? Let's see what happens. I told you, I know what they're going to say. If it is good, it is good. Then I didn't know. But the church will rise up in a way. Like I said, I'm part of the top. I know what we have planned. Uh, you will see it on a media release. We can shut cities down. So what? Then they take us to prison. So do you know what will happen to South Africa if they lock all pastors up into prison? The UN will put sanctions on them. They won't do it. And if they touch you, make sure your iPhone is recording. Trust me. We will have Easter and it will be open. The only way The only way it'll be stopped is if they stop us before we can get here. I mean, it's, it's, if they stop us out, that's the only way. I don't know. Then you remain in your cars and we preach outside. Or we preach on the, on the cross across the road where you park. In your car, safely. But, but church we're going to have. Okay. Hmm. There's too many Christians. And, and, and many, I, unless we stood up, it would have never happened. I thank God, I really do. I thank God that there's somebody like Pastor Art. It's nothing to me. What I mean by is nothing to me. I don't, I've never met the man. I just understand authority. That's all. Are you guys with me? Say with me, integrity. Let's get on, let's get on, let's get on, let's get on. The, uh, 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 the second law of favor. Say with you the law of protocol. 
Every environment has protocol. Every relationship has protocol. When protocol is violated, the benefits of a relationship is violated. Are you guys with me? Uh, when you have, pro you have spoken protocol, then you have um, stipulated or really put in order protocol and then you have a silent protocol. I like to operate by a silent protocol. It's the greatest protocol you can have. It is when somebody can discern this authority or this order. Do you think we have ever told our church to jump up and praise? No, it's a silent protocol. It's their spirit that is coming alive, that is connecting. Uh, uh, sorry, it is their body that is connecting with their spirit. Because as I preach, something is moving. But for the law of receiving and importation to take place, your body needs to connect with how your spirit is. The Bible says that when Mary came into the vicinity of Elizabeth, who carried John the Baptist in her womb, and Mary carried Jesus in her womb, when she came into the vicinity of Elizabeth, Elizabeth said these words. They said, but the baby in her womb leaped. Your womb is your spirit. That when revelation is preached, something, will leap it is that thing that makes you sit on the seat on the edge of your chair that makes you want to jump but if you like you've been too long in a dead church religion has slithered killed you but we are here to resuscitate you i was speaking i was speaking to a great general uh, pastor rodney and i said to him we were speaking about moves of God from the past to uh, greats. You know, you're speaking to me about T.D. Jakes in his meeting, Joyce Myers in his meeting, everybody under the power of God. You know, we were speaking on this side. I said to him, because his favorite saying is that this city will be shaken by the power. I said, you know, I said, we had a service in this building. He said, I was preaching on angels. And the whole building began to shake that the projectors went out we have it on recording and a wind came into the building no storm outside a wind came into the building blew through there blew through the media that the papers would blow up in the media room go through that and i was preaching here and i said what is happening and we heard these rocks falling on the roof no storm no rain no earthquake i said what is, is you know I can't remember if I was saying as the angels arriving or what, and it felt, and it looked, it sounded like something was walking. Go, 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 yeah. These are signs of, we've had many signs. Are you guys with me? We're preaching in the week. Oil appeared when I was preaching on, on oil appeared on people's hands and faces. That we have seen a lot, even in the church. People were worshiping and all of a sudden their hands, I was in Cape Town. I was preaching on Cape, in Cape Town where we had hips healed. It was, there was a young guy. He's standing and worshiping. Uh, he was a gangster. When I looked again, his whole head, face, everything full of oil. Hands full of oil in worship. So with your favor. So every relationship has a protocol. When that protocol is broken, that relationship is broken, God might have designed that relationship to have favor for you for 10 years, but because you violated protocol, it can disintegrate the favor that God has prepared. Are you guys with me? There's, you know, you know uh, 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 that is where a 20 year old rela or 20 year long relationship designed by God for you can become one day when you violate protocol. It's like these, 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 these morons on, uh, on, on, on keyboard warriors. You know, somebody said, Leon, I said, no, I said, no, Johannes. I said, 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 I I just want to get, help people's lives. I don't think you have that in you. You don't want to, do you open up the church for money? <laughs> do you, we get more money in lockdown I promise you then opening up the church it drops by about a million rand when we open the church so 
Why do I want to open up the church? Lockdown a lot of viewers. People are giving. Because you get, all of you give 10 rand, 20 rand or something like that. I saw it. But in the church you feel like you can't give that. Or you don't have that type of frequency of meetings. And that began to bless the church. So why, why, you know, the, these people, they are, they're, all they, all they, they're just wicked in their hearts. You know, your success, or say it to me like, say the same, my success. Say the same, my destiny is determined by whom I honor. Very important. The person I choose to honor is the one where importation will come from. My team has been a witness of it. My family has been a witness of it. Whomever I have met and honored, there'll be importation. I remember meeting Apostle Maldonado. I got to his church. This is now you know you're a prophet. I get to his church. Alone, I'm there. I just, I don't know, somebody comes to me and say, like, uh, they just ask me, you know, I, they saw me on, 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 on Facebook or something like that, and they said, oh, prophet, uh, do you have a word for me? I said, yeah, I'm just there. Nobody knows who I was. The first day, 40,000, 30,000 people. So I'm like, yeah, you know, this is what the Lord is saying. I said, who's, 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 who's Jose? That's my name. I said, okay. So I said, uh, this, I said, this will happening. The next thing, the power of God hits the guy into the gardens. He comes up, he takes his jacket off, throws it, takes his shoes off, throws it in front of me. His watch off, throws it in front of me. Now more people are coming. Now they want prophecy. So now I'm prophesying to them. And they're just taking out money, giving it to me, dollars. I'm like, listen, I'm going to get into trouble here. You know. Next thing, they're taking me into, into, a, into the offices. And I remember it was somewhere in the financial offices or something. And I'm prophesying to all the staff. Power of God is hitting them through the desks. And I'm prophesying and they say, and they come with envelopes of money afterwards. I said, whoa. I said, no, 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 no. They said, no. Our father has said every time when we receive a prophecy, we seal it. You know, so I take it. They say, we need to, we need to introduce you. We need to introduce the Apostle Maldonado. So I go from there again to another office prophesying over more people. The power of God is everywhere. Until I'm sitting in his office. And he comes in. And he hugs me. And he uh, gives me bags and bags and bags full of material. And he hugs me. And he says, when you leave this place, you will see miracles. He says, I'll pray for a double portion of my man today. I've never met him. First day there. What is it? It's a law of attraction that is activated by, by the power of favor. Are you guys hearing me? And I come back there, guess what? Glory and miracles in our ministry. Then meeting from, then I get to, even when it comes to Prophet Jibra Angel, shaking hands once with him. He just turned my hand like this. He said, uh, do one, two, three. He said, you will prophesy. From that moment, accuracy like sharp accuracy he prophesied before and all those things in a different style but sharp accuracy things that you cannot deny importation is real are you guys with me so it depends you see protocol and your success is decided by the one that you honor it's what we call the law of protocol the law of protocol <clears throat> That is how, uh, 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 uh. there's a protocol when you have to get into a king's presence. It was Daniel. Yeah, Daniel had to study 12 months on how to speak in his conversation before he was allowed to sit and eat with a king. Daniel. Esther was prepared for what, a year, 12 months. Are you guys with me? Say with the protocol. Oh, sorry, Daniel had to be three, it was three years. Sorry, three years he had a conversation. Esther was 12 months. She had to be prepared. But every relationship requires a certain protocol. You need to discern what gift is there. Am I ready to obey the protocol to discern the gift? Are you guys with me? Let's get to law number three. Let's go, let me, let me before I forget it, say this with me. Because I don't have this one in my notes. Say the law of difference. Say it again. Say the law of difference. 
discerning people's differences. That if I can walk, let's say I'm walking into a prophet that is of a greater stature than me, that I can have the grace to understand it, to discern it, and know how to respond, know how to honor, know how to my language must be, and be in my rank and place. There are people that are blinded to it. I have seen them. When they get blinded, it's because of pride. They no longer can be sensitive to whom they're talking to. Easily forgetting their place. Mm -hmm. Are you guys with me? Easily forgetting their place. You know when offense comes in your heart? It goes from Prophet Leon to Leon. It goes from jumping up in the church to sitting. Hmm, everybody else is jumping. You just not jumping anymore. Offenses come in. When you discern difference, you discern the gift difference of grace and gifts upon a person's life. You know then how to honor and talk and, and meet them. Are you guys with me? Number four, where are we now? Number four, so with these servanthood. The law of servanthood. I'm telling you things on that will help you get favor on your life. A servant is one who finds a favor. A servant can have more favor than a son if he knows how to do things right. Are you guys with me? Say it again. Say servanthood. I am not impressed by money. Like I said, I sat in Lamborghini. I had people promising me, oh, we'll buy you this. I'm going to buy you this Lamborghini when I get hundreds of millions. And they were getting hundreds of millions in a year or two. I'm like, oh, okay. I said, in three weeks, you will be gone out of my church. Don't challenge a prophet. Especially if I can see of what will happen. You know, God loves me. Not only does He love me, He likes me. Let me tell you something. If I go on my knees today and I say, Lord, I want you to uh, remove Tian um, out, out of the church. Like, I don't know how to get rid of him or something, but he's a troublemaker. Get him out of the church. Do you know it would be not one week? I just did it now. Eh? Not with him I'm speaking. I'm saying another situation of late. Some would know. Just did it. Just went on my knees. I said, God, uh-uh. Just get going. It wasn't a day later. Because he's the employer. I am his manager. Are you guys with me? I'm a custodian over things. But when you become a servant, when you begin to learn to serve God, you enter into a realm of friendship. Are you guys with me? Moses, he says, my servant Moses, to whom I speak like a friend speaks to a friend, face to face. Were you not afraid, Miriam and Aaron, to stretch out and touch my servant Moses? For I speak to all the other prophets. I reveal myself to all the other prophets in a vision or a dream. But to Moses, I speak face to face. I speak plainly. He has seen the form of the Lord and you had no fear to stretch out your hand to touch him and leprosy struck them. Are you guys with me? Say with me, say with me serving. What is serving? Let me tell you, let's say I'm standing here. You know King David, he said, oh. mm. How sweet the waters from that certain brook will taste now. And there were, I think there were three mighty men around him. They didn't ask, when do you want it? How do you want it? They ran. They fought through a whole army. Got him the water, fought back through a whole army just to bring him something he desired. And David poured it out. He said, I shall not because this costs too much blood. I mean, seriously, at least drink the water. We went through a whole war for you to, to get this thing. So if you are a boss, which I am, if you are employed people, which I have, and uh, let's, say, let's say you have an employee and you say, hmm, 
you know, I want some chocolate. I, I'm, I'm gluten and whatever, lactose, I tolerant. So I want some chocolate almond milk. It's just like, mm, chocolate almond milk would be so nice now. You have one person that will say, yo, oh, if I had on me now, I would have, I would have given you so. Another one would say, uh, can I, can I, do you want me, um, do you want me maybe to go get some or so, you know? And then there's a third person that'll just say, I'm coming now. Now, which one will you favor? Which one is servanthood? It's the third one. The other ones, it was a, it was a burden. So they had to say something to excuse them from the uncomfortability and the, and the, and the how can I say it, the, um, the, uh, 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 the inconvenience it would cause them to get it. That is when God looks at a servant's heart. I remember when I served uh, uh, Mark Brennenkamp in the, right in the beginning of my ministry, right, right, right in the beginning. I had nothing. I had, I lived in my car, lived in the streets. The anointing was on the man. He was used greatly by God. And I, uh, and then I lived with people and I know they're watching now. Uh, you know, they were not the wealthiest. In fact, they lived in the poor, one of the poorest areas. And I, like I said, they're watching now. And they know I mean it with all goodness of heart. They had a three bedroom, one, two, three. They had a three bedroom flat six women I think living in the flat and they said they'll make room for me so I went into the flats I was young I didn't know better uh, so all of them moved into two rooms to give me the main bedroom they're watching now that's where I come from sitting on the back of a bucky every morning five o'clock just to be at prayer daily to pray from five to seven, Tonya was there. And I sat on that bucket and I'm thinking, dear Lord Jesus, this thing is like, you're like bumping, you know, to get to prayer meeting. And then people want to fight me because of where I am today. Have you paid that price? Then I remember I had no money. I had nothing. I had, they gathered. They, all of them, as, as, the, as the women there in the house, because it was sisters and, and a mother and stuff like that. So uh, they got, put all their money together, a thousand rand, and they gave it to me. They said, we want to give this to you as a seed, just, just to bless you. And these were poor people. Poor. You remember them? Poor. Then, so when you speak about these people, they cannot, they cannot, they'll tell you from where I've come from. This is none other but the favor of God. I have not ministers out there to get my position like all these other young ministers are doing and have done to me and every single one of them who has touched me has failed they've lost their churches the one I want why are they gonna burn your church down and let's just leave it there so then I took the little money that I had and I bought I remember I bought my grand camp a a chocolate and a water. I didn't know what I was. He was like unapproachable. If I can say it like that, for the, for somebody of my stature, I was so possessed. I was, I don't know. I just, you know. So I, I realized I could get to the prayer meeting in the morning, and I could sneak in. And they didn't even allow me to go into his office. So I had to give it to somebody to put in his office, and I told the person not to tell him. And I did that for one month, two months, three months, three or four months, living on the streets, showering. Okay, there obviously I was taken in there, but only for a time. Well, that was towards the end. In the beginning, I was showering on the beach, sleeping in my car. And then they would break into my car and steal my food and stuff like that. And, uh, um, but I did that until he once asked, who's doing this? And then the person said, no, it is, it is, it is Leon. And he said, I want to employ it immediately, you know. And then I gave my life to the kingdom of God. I was in ministry before that also. I was in ministry before that when I lived up here for the first two years with a big church here around the corner. 
Shame the poor, poor pastor, he doesn't, uh, he's got a huge church, but he doesn't like hearing from me um, when, I, when I call him, you know. Uh, so I'm not going to say some things that happened last week. Um, there's, I said to Prophet Angel, I said, sweet, the vindication of the Lord is sweet. I said, the vengeance of God. When God vindicates you, I said, look at you, look at, I said, look at this meeting. Yeah, my enemy is sitting confused. What am I doing in this meeting? Confused completely. Uh, he responded, he said, he says, this is, this is only God. You know, I, now for me, it doesn't matter what turns out how, I have lost the fear of man. I've lost the, the need to a, a, a please or approve man, be approved by man. Fear God. That is it. Don't worry who can point, appoint you or this. I've been on TV, been on TV ministry. I've seen the power fall on thousands. Like this. I wave my hands like this. You wouldn't even be looking at me and a force would hit you. Thousands of people. We have seen it. I mean, I, I, there's nothing. I've died. At that time, I didn't die. It was all great. You, you use that to like your advantage. You just, you just know you have power just to win like this and the drummer will fly. You know you have it. Sitting in a restaurant, you just go like this and the power of God hits everyone there. We had power. We fasted 40 days water, 21 days water. Until a man has a dream coming to the leader saying, I need to give Leon, I need to settle Leon's, uh, Jesus is standing by my bed saying, I need to settle Leon's debt. On the date that I wrote, where I said to the Lord, I trust you for that debt cancellation on 1 September of 350,000 Rand, and I wrote my signature, I gave a seed of 35 or 40,000 Rand, and I said, if it is not done, I want a surety of this amount, because I understand the word. And then I, I went through all these things. One September, a man who has never given to the church was sweating by the third day of the meeting. And another country saying to the leadership, Jesus is standing in his dream, saying he must come to me to ask me every debt I have and settle it. Now you want to tell me that God is not real. Come on. And then you have people sitting lazy at their houses, not wanting to come to church because the lockdown devil has made you so lazy to sit at church. I sit at home, not wanting to come to church. While we're experiencing the glory, the power of God. Are you guys with me? That is why I'm saying we ain't gonna stop this. I don't care if they put a lock here, we will find homes or we'll find places. Because we are there now. We are there now where we obey civil authority. We will disobey God. And you can decide with your own conscience what to do. I know what I will do. Peter said, you choose whether it's good for us to obey God or to obey man. But we choose to obey God. Are you guys with me? Go, go with me. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. I had a great sermon for you. Obviously, I, I don't uh, preach on notes. Okay. So, uh, so uh, that is Pastor Martin. He can go through every point for you. That's, that's why we have a balance. Okay. How do you know if you're a servant? If servanthood doesn't cost you something, you are not in servanthood. If it doesn't cost you time, energy or money, you're not in servanthood. You're there to be served. Some people complain the aircon isn't working. Shut up. Do you know how much it costs, first of all, for these aircons? Then secondly, do you know how many times they break and just to service them? And do you know we had to pay a whole year of not having church in this building? 150,000 rand rent. I want my comfort. Prophet Angel was preaching here. Maybe some of you remember. He says, white people. He says, why you don't experience power is because you have too many. He says, luxuries affects your ability to have power in the realm of the spirit. Too many comfortabilities, luxuries. It removes power. The Bible says, deny yourself. Deny your flesh, deny everything 
yourself, deny it. If you say, mm, I want that, uh, I want uh, that thing, just say no and deny and move away. That's how you start off. Are you guys with me? Until your body and your flesh begins to be ruled and controlled by your spirit. I'm going on too long. I need to minister to you. So let's go, let's go. The fifth or wherever we are right now. Let me go, let me, let me jump, let me go. Say with me, say with me, uh, the law of reaction. Say it again, say the law of reaction. It determines how you respond and react to a situation. Whether favor will be upon you or not. Are you guys with me? The last law, say the law of a seed. Give me the scripture, a gift will make a way for a man. Not a bribe, a gift will make a way for a man. You know, when you get pulled over, that scripture, the Holy Spirit all of a sudden speaks to you about that scripture. <laughs> where, where is it? Proverbs, what? Huh? Proverbs 18, verse 16. Is that it? Proverbs 18, verse 16. A man's gift, say with the gift. When Proverbs was written, there was no spiritual gift, eh? Are you guys with me? So never take this as in the gift of the Holy Ghost on your life. No, 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 no. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Your seed will bring favor on your life. I do not see any general, any great man of God without a seed. Are you guys with me? When I was poor, I had nothing. I would make sure I take tens and tens and tens of thousands out of debt and lay it at their feet. Why? I understand the law of a seed. I remember the day I desired a... So, so I'm just wearing this special watch because uh, Stefan got it to me as a gift. It's not the best thing. I, I just like the red. Like, uh, what is that Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank? You know, so... Um, uh, Kevin O'Leary so or, or so so he bought me this gift so that was the only reason I'm wearing it uh, but I like the fashion of it. it's a diesel watch it's it's, it's cheap it's, I think this one is the is the most expensive one it's 10k so it's the most expensive diesel watch but for him it is a lot but I remember when I all I wanted was a diesel watch it was only 5k like really a nice one what I'm saying is cheap, you know. Our faith is stretched by now. Okay. Um, I'm not spending my money on watches also, hey. So, I remember I wanted a watch. I wanted a black diesel watch. Five grand. We had nothing. Our salary was like 12,000 rand. My wife and I, we had to live in Umschlanga in a rental unit that was 11,000 rand. Now, how must we live? We don't have any car. We're lifting each other on scooters. The scooters break. But I was a pastor. My pastors, I blessed them. So, um, so, we, so I was like, I want this gift. And I'm in America and the Holy Spirit is saying to me, I want you to go buy that what you want and give it to, to the preacher. One of the, like the youth pastors or something like that. So I went, I'm looking, and it's even better than the one that I want. And, uh, you know, I took it and I gave it to him, but it hurt me because it was something I really wanted. Are you guys with me? When I arrived back home, I found a watch on my desk, which was the exact same watch, similar, which I wanted which Pastor Chris bought for me before we even met face to face. Then, when you sow something, you reap of that measure. So we've just been reaping diesel, 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 diesel. So I'm like, no, 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 no. This must stop now. I've got, I've got like a lot of diesels now, you know. Other things we can also say, we just reap, reap, reap of it. But that's just a joke. Certainly the law of a seed. So a gift, your gift will make a way for you. It's a favor of God. Are you guys with me? Not a spiritual gift, a physical gift. Never get into the presence of a great man. Please, I'm not saying I'm great. I'm speaking of anything. You know, when I went to Kenneth Meshu, I take a gift. 
Do you know the amount of gifts we buy? I mean, sorry, the, 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 how much I pay for it. If I go see somebody of a grace, I'll go buy a special edition Mont Blanc, let's say 20 or 25K. But I understand the principle. Even when they came, when, when Queen Sheba came to Solomon, she brought a massive gift worth his whole year of salary, King Solomon's whole year of salary. He sent her back with 10 times more. She brought that gift to him just to honor him for 15 minutes of his time. He sent her back with more. It is a symbol of God. Are you guys with me? That is why the Magi that came to Jesus came from the same place as where Queen Sheba comes from. When they came to Jesus when he was two years old, they brought 40 million US dollars. Don't let anybody talk to you nonsense to say Jesus was poor. They sought for him for two years, carried 40 million US dollars, gave it to him. His uncle, Joseph of Arimathea, ran his trust fund. He dressed, if Jesus was here today, he would dress in Gucci. Why? When he was on the cross, he had his seamless clothing on. A seamless clothing that had no seam was only worn by kings. It was too wealthy for others. When deliverance comes your way, the first thing that changes is the way you dress. You can bet. Listen. I'm telling you now, the Bible says that when Jesus casted the devils out of the madman of Gadara, he sat in his right mind, and the Bible says this, clothed in his right mind, which means in the Greek, smartly dressed. That when people would look at him, they, could, they were shocked as it was a different person. Are you guys with me? Listen, listen, listen. Deliverance will change everything about you. You won't having be having, uh, and I'm not against tattoos in every way, in any way. I would love a tattoo. I'm just never getting to it. Okay. I would love a tattoo. So I'm not against tattoos. I think some people have encountered tattoos like Marie. So all these people got tattoos, Don't Tonya, with our logo on. So I, so I said one day, you know, before the news gets in and like saying this is a cult now, you know, I never told them to get it. A tattoo is a sign of allegiance. That's all. Okay. And, uh, and honor. Okay. So. He, uh, so I said, okay, I see all these people having these tattoos. Even some that has left our church and backslid and has tattoos. Do you know how that tattoo is tormenting them when they're looking at that one? <laughs> you know, look, looking at that tattoo. But I made a joke. I said, okay, it's time. Listen, we're going to change our logo. Uh, <laughs> and I know everybody that has a tattooed on them. So Shane, the Savior, the secret to money is the favor of God. You cannot do it without the favor of God. Favor means Shane, which means coin. Are you guys with me? Listen, listen, if there's ever any message you have to listen to me, it's tonight. You need this favor. This favor is the touch of God. Even if it feels like it's not working, it is just a matter of time. Trust me. The moment it has to work, it'll work for you. The moment it has to speak, it'll speak for you. And then you'll realize the God of Leon de Prius is, is there. Are you guys with me? Favor literally means coins, which means God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be prosperous. What parent here wants their child to be poor? You can raise your hand. You're not worthy to be a parent. What parent here? wants their children poor how much more our heavenly father if our parents wants us to have good things how much more our heavenly father say with your favor say shine i want to minister to you and uh before i do i want to i want to pray for one thing when the oil touches you that it will be the oil of favor that is coming on you are you guys with me La Ruska Adinamandi Eskitekin and Maradona Moskita. You see, you are known for, for the one that uh, I was approached by some people. 
I was approached by some people. I could, okay, good people, good people. Servants of the Lord. Pastors, big churches. Said to me. Um, because of the situation that happens and so on. They, they came here and they said, you know, Leon. We all. In this place where they're at, where there's a lot of pastors. He says, we all acknowledge the prophetic anointing on your life, the prophetic gift. He says, we know you are a prophet. Why don't you come? I said, I don't want to come. It's to, it's, I said, I came those times. That is what happened. I said, but frankly, you know, why must I come? Um, he says, no, but we need you and so on. So on. I said, so, okay. so I said, okay, I'll go. But if I can't make it, then, then, then some of my guys will, will go and represent me. Um, as a prophet, it's a, it's a lonely road. God had to rip everything away from me to not be dependent on anything. I, you know, I say to people, even if we employ people, I say, this is a mission. This is not a job. It's a mission. You have to, I don't know if this thing is going to fail next month. And you know what? I'm a prophet. I just, if it happens, it, I mean, then, then God is, it's God's problem. Everybody will scream false prophet or not. But I've decided to not allow that pressure to be upon me and for me to carry it. To sit and stress because then I can't do anything. Either God, I mean an angel stood next to me and said, plant this church. Not a man, not a voice, not a thought, not a dream, not a vision. It was in reality an angel stood. I was in another field, which I call the field of dreams. And we were walking and the angel was walking next to me. And it was long grass like this. The most beautiful grass. And the angel who is my angel. All of you have an angel. The angel who is my angel said to me, Don't do one, two, three in ministry. Go and plant a church in Centurion on the 18th of September. And I did it. And since that appearance of that angel i don't care who says what i don't care what minister says i am fake and they're going to carry on because of their demons or their insecurity or whatever i don't care two cents i know what i have experienced i know what i've seen i know whose i am and i definitely know whose i'm not I, that was just one angelic encounter. I had many angels encountering me. In this church, you have seen angels. You have, you, have, you, have, you have experienced angels at your houses. We were in Kruger's door where the face of Jesus Christ appeared on the stage. Yeah. You stupid theologian. Uh, Jonas going to ask 25,000 rand for this. No. God showed it to me because I would not. He didn't show it to you because you would. What a privilege it is to sit in a church where the word is opened in prophetic revelation. You know, I am so full of the word, so full of the spirit. The only thing that is just limiting me now is just time. That's all. I can now preach. I have no... You see, when somebody is still learning or they're still training or they're limited or they don't really have a grace gift, they have to prepare and finish. When they finish, they finish. I am so full of His Word. I can preach to you till tomorrow and it will be revelation upon revelation upon revelation. You see, there are prophets of midnight. There are prophets of afternoons, prophets of mornings and so on. I am a prophet of the midnight, meaning once the hour hits late, things begins to happen. So that's why you have to come to our prophetic retreats. There we prophesied right through the night till the next morning. I prophesied till 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. I had to be in Kruger store preaching. Drawing out for people, every single one. Drawing out. Where you will work, what this, what that. This murder took place, this how. Now that you thought it happened by this, but this is how it happened. Now how do you take three murders in a place of 60 people? Three murders. I pull out by prophecy and I explain what happened. I said, 
the wound on the head. This is what happened. That is what happened. This is where he was lying when he was dying. This is not psychic. 